Good, eh? Welcome back to another bloody episode of the Cubane series. The series where we're trying to be the first to make um, th this molecule, Cubane 1 for dicarboxylate at, at home. And um, you may have heard some news recently um, that I have written my thesis. It's not submitted yet. I'm still waiting on some supervisor feedback. But the point is it's written. I've done it. It's fine. It'll be fine. Anyway, I wanted to start on some good news because I am left in an off-white solid, which is mostly 1,4-cubane dicarboxylate methyl ester, which is also off-white in literature, aka slightly yellow. Yeah, so um, there was a bit of a cubane race that started, and um, yes, I, I, I very much lost. And a particular person has been trying for three years, and that is very admirable. Although pain and suffering is an important part of chemistry, this is going too far. So I decided to help YouTube out a bit, and show them how to actually do chemistry. I've kind of been scooped. Camolius, first of all, how dare you? I was going to do this first, just because I've been at it for three years. Three years? We've been doing this for three years. Sure. <laughs> this is our year. This is our year 2023 Cubane. It's our year. It's our year. Gosh, this really feels like a roller coaster of an intro to a video. What other news have I got? Mid-July, I'm going to be in San Francisco at Open Source Live. It's the convention with all the other YouTube makers, and I'll be there, and it's going to be a great time, and you can buy tickets and come along. Yes, while there are a lot of very funny comments on Kamolis' video uh, that I did laugh at, i got to say, we absolutely have to give Kamolis full credit for what he did. Just because he's a professional and he knows what he's doing and he has a well-stocked lab doesn't mean he's not an individual who's doing the Cubane synthesis at home. I, I could have a lab as well-stocked as his if, if, I, if I wanted to. If, if I... And because it's obviously just good-natured fun and Kamolis is a good bloke, he has sent me samples of some of the stuff he's made to use as standard. So actually we've got some of the, the diketal, the diketone, and we have done it. This is some methyl ester of the 1,4 dicarboxyl cubane. We've done it. We're here, I'm in the lab, at home, and we've got some cubane. So well done, series over, run the credit. So I know I'm going on a bit about someone else's video, but I just want to run through some of the things he does and how that's going to impact our series. And then we're going to get to some actual chemistry. We're going to do some chemistry this episode. We're going to get to some chemistry, okay? Kabolius runs this on such a large scale, which is very impressive. And two things really stand out to me. The first one is that these products all look very good. It's amazing how good he's managed to get his products to look after a bit of purification. And the second thing that really stands out to me is how bad some of the reactions look. Even though he makes the product's really nice. The reactions still tar up and go yellow. There's no avoiding it. There's just inherent tar. But even if you get tar, you can still purify around it. Obviously, the step that this series has been caught on for so long is the UV photochemistry ring cyclization step. And Camolius manages to do it I mean, first time by doing the benzophenone sensitized recently published work. And and that's so cool. It just works for him. He's able to use 395 nanometer light, just simple LED arrays, use normal glass, but it just works. And this channel, me especially, has been obsessed with tracking this reaction via TLC to know whether it's working or not. And Kamalius just doesn't bother and it just works. He has to run it for three days straight, but because he can just use the 395 nanometer LEDs, he can put a whole lot of power into it. It's fantastic. It just works. But it does highlight a slight difference in our procedure because you've got this complicated molecule that has the two protection groups on it, the two ketal groups in it, and you need to have at least one ketone to be able to do the photochemistry ring cyclization. The question is, do you pull both protection groups off and run it with the diketone, as Camolius does, or do you just pull one of those groups off and then run it uh, with just one ketone in the photochemistry reaction and then pull the second protecting group off later as we're planning to do in our series currently. On paper, there are pros and cons for both sides. And the reason we are doing the one protecting group off first is because it was said that this molecule underwent cyclization in the photochemistry step better. And, and, and that was identified as our hard step. The more efficient we could make that step, the better. However, the catch then after the photochemistry step, this 
molecule is very hard to purify. It, uh, it seems like all the papers that do it this way note that this molecule is particularly hard to purify. But looking at Camolius's way of doing things, I think he has chosen the better route, especially now that we have the synthesized photochemistry steps. So that should work a lot easier than before. So we shouldn't need that you know, extra help from that one protection group, whether or not it actually helps or not. But also seeing how much it tarred up anyway, I don't want to try the one where it was extra hard to purify if the easy one to purify still look like that. Where does that leave us? Well, that kind of puts us just one step back in terms of we have the mono ketal and, we, and that's where we were at and we were going to make more mono ketal but rather than making more mono ketal what we do is instead we'll make more diketone so we'll divert off i don't have any bloody dioxane and i don't feel like making any dioxane so we're going to go back to see how much tribromo product we have we're going to see if we can carry all this forward and see how much diketone we can make after we get the diketone purify it we can once again throttle the bloody photochemistry reaction grab it by both hands and wring its little neck until we get some buddy product that's my that's my dream that's what i think about constantly but um <laughs> for today more dye ketone okay what i want to try is uh running the deals older reaction with this this is our tribromo product well it was at one point it has gone a very ugly brown color. I was then thinking about running a purification on this, doing a recrystallization, but that's not in the spirit of this series. We're doing fast and loose. It'll either work or it won't. So let's just put this straight into the deal with older reaction. So we've got 2.85 grams, uh, but I've just immediately changed my mind about not running any purification from it. I just had a quick look back at some of the references and, and they do say the quality of this material really does affect the yields of the uh, Dills Older reaction. So, so we're just going to be running a water wash, maybe a tiny bit of sodium sulfide just to clear up any free bromine from this and then a recrystallization from ethanol and we'll see what sort of yield we get from that. Um, and hopefully it doesn't take too long. I don't know, I'm trying to get through this and, and every time I go to do something, I've got to do something else, but oh well, we'll, we'll get to it, let's do it. and we've ended up with 2.1 grams of purified material. And while it sucks to lose, you know, uh, some amount of material while we lost uh, 0.7 grams of material, uh, this definitely has a lot better purity. Their weird smell is gone. There was a weird smell of the other one and the crystals were kind of sticking together. It was a bit sticky. We'll now use this material, all of it. How much we got? 2.1 grams yeah um into the deals older reaction just need to reflux it with sodium hydroxide and ethanol um let's just fly through it let's set it up and do it straight away let's let's get to it That's what I get for not doing chemistry enough. That's right, it's clear enough. 
Look at that. That's that's drinkable. <laughs> the green colours, not the mold. The mold is just the mold. The, the algae. The green is definitely just dire about it. With the intention of suppressing mold growth. Do you reckon the cooling potential of the water decreases if it's filled with algae? Or does it increase? You know? You know, I really should change it. You know I'm not going to, but I just wanted to point out that I, I definitely should. Oh well. <laughs> And we have some material here. It's a slight yellow color. It's kind of a, a creamy off-white. Still a little wet. So now the step, this is a new step. Uh, we're trying to make the diketones. So we're trying to pull both of those protecting groups off. We're gonna be using some of the diketal and the monoketal just together in the reaction. I don't think there should be any issue in doing this. Uh, I could be wrong, but I think it should be fine. So this is some raw reaction mix we had before. Um, that we used in uh, making some monoketal. Everything else that didn't uh, crystallize out from that reaction mix, I've kept, which will be a mix of the monoketal and, and the diketal, I reckon. And we'll just use this um, when we run the reaction again. It was a mixture of monoketal and diketal, but we kept it and there's probably a half a gram in there. And then we've got two grams or so of the diketal, which is slightly more brown than the stuff we've made today, but it might have degraded over time. So we've got about two grams there, uh, half gram, and then uh, I'm not sure exactly what the amount here is, but it'll be about a, about a gram, maybe uh, a bit less. So we're gonna chuck all of these together with some concentrated sulfuric acid and stir it for a day or so. Initially, we're gonna add the sulfuric acid very cold, um, and then we'll just let it stir at room temperature for this total of about three grams. We're gonna need about 17 grams, maybe 20 grams of sulfuric acid should sit in this flask quite nicely. Uh, we're not in summer anymore, so we're not, it's not gonna get to 40 degrees <laughs> and it'll be stirring overnight. So it gets quite cold here at the moment and it might get to 10 degrees or so. Not freezing, but um, kind of nice, good actual reaction conditions, I think. So I won't have to try too hard, uh, which is nice. I could use um, the drain cleaner as is um, unpurified, but uh, unsure about it. There's a lot of other variables in this reaction. So we're going to be using, I mean, this is still drain cleaner stuff. I just distilled it at some point. So every so often it sort of leaks out of that joint. Um, that's the compressor turning on. It does that every, you know, probably about eight out of 10 minutes. All right, so we're just about done. Um, I've turned off the heating and the uh, sulfuric acid stopped boiling pretty quickly. I'll just kind of turn off this. It, it, you can see it's it's nice and, and clear, uh, clear and thick, just how I like it, you know. Great, fantastic. Let's let's get to doing that. We are left with a clay colored material in good yield things are things are okay because we're doing a photoreaction next 
any coloured impurities really will mess with things a lot because they'll strongly absorb the UV and really get in the way of the UV getting to the material which we need it to. So we're just going to do a recrystallization to purify it. The bloody Camolius video, um, which I guess now is a you know a reference point. Um, <laughs> uses uh, ethyl acetate and activated carbon to get rid of the coloured impurities. But his material um, is a lot more tarry than mine is. I'll enjoy saying that because I don't think I'll get to say it very often. I, I feel like a recrystallization, normal recrystallization, will work fine here and in the spirit of, of keeping a very hardware store level um we'll just use acetone and and hexane or the, the shellite acetone and shellite and hopefully that's fine this material is not a hundred percent dry but once again it'll be all right let's bloody recrist it Here we are, left with 1.35 grams of a nice crystalline powder. The yield's gonna be difficult to work out exactly, but look, the important thing is we have, you know, nearly one and a half grams of diketone to do the UV step with, and it looks like great purity. Yeah, but it's a bit weird with that recrist. The, the tar seemed to just decide to leave at some point, whether it all oiled out or there was a small amount of water trapped in the, the crystals before the recrist and it sort of phase separated and took all the tar with it. But it's really nice when the tar just decides to leave your product um, and then just lets you decant the product off and leave the tar behind. I'm, I'm sure there's lots of diketone left in there, but um, for the sake of purity, we'll leave that behind. Important thing is we got some great material to continue on with. So uh, we're, we're back up as per always, it seems, at the UV step, but Feeling very, very enthusiastic about it. You get to bloody play with this thing. You ready? You ready? Look away. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. We've got to do it. The guy got that tattoo. Have I mentioned the tattoo guy? The Cubane tattoo with 2022? And then he left all these other spaces <laughs> for all the other years to be put out and crossed out when I, when I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck.